Hello, I'm Entrilism and welcome to Let's Play Space Hulk Tactics. Space Hulk Tactics is a game coming out on the 9th of October, which is a squad-based tactical battle game based on the original Space Hulk board game from Warhammer 40k, where you take a squad of your Terminator Space Marines into a pile of space debris and fight gribbly close combat aliens called Gene Stealers. Um, it's a bit like... If you've ever seen the film Aliens, it's a bit like that, but if the actual, like, Marines in that were actually encased in like really really heavy armor and actually had a chance uh, So this is a sponsored video. Uh, it's sponsored by Focus Home Interactive in case you care who's sponsoring it And uh, there is a link down below if you wish to get the game It's sponsored so bear in mind that I'm gonna be biased even if it's only an implicit bias So I'm gonna try and stay away from any overt opinion and you can make your mind up based on like all the footage you see Because I think you're all smart enough to be able to make up your own opinion and to understand that Oh, it's your Margul Gene Steel. Look at the note. Look, look, it's tentacle face that means it's the, it's the original Yamagul strain of Gene Stealer. Sorry, I just want to have a slight geek out at the moment. That's... I really hadn't noticed that before. I only just noticed that now. Anyway, uh, so we're going to dive into the campaign. There's actually two campaigns. There's actually a Gene Stealer campaign. Uh, there's, so there's a Blood Angels campaign, which is the Space Marines, which is like the default like perspective. You're the humans. Admittedly, super human, genetically modified, like almost demigods compared to most mortals, but you are still basically humans. Uh, but you can actually play as the Gene Stealers. Uh, we're going to play as the Space Marines just because they're a lot more of a, um, a default perspective. But don't get me wrong, the Gene Stealers campaign is a proper campaign. Like, you can play as them and have a campaign. Uh, FYI, you play the Blood Angels chapter here, which is, I think, the original chapter you played if you played the original board game. But if you play Gene Stealers, you actually don't fight against Blood Angels, you fight against Ultramarines. Which I'm sure many people appreciate because a lot of people hate the Ultramarines just because they are the default Space Marines. That Warhammer put on everything, like they're always the default, apart from like one box set. It's always been Ultramarines just because they're like the vanilla, they're default. Uh, Blood Angels, however, are the main chapter in the Space Marine campaign. I'm actually not going to start a new campaign, I'm actually going to load up an existing campaign just because uh, their first mission, which is like five minutes long, is basically a tutorial. So I'm going to skip past that tutorial mission. Uh, I will actually just cut to show you the cutscene that plays immediately after that because the cutscene is pretty badass and basically typifies everything about Space Hulk. So I'm going to cut to the cutscene now and we'll load into the first, well, the second mission, but the first proper mission. Transition! This is Sergeant Tahario. In the name of Sanguinius and the Emperor, the squad stands ready. Bless your weapons and advance. Lots are all here. My more specs reach and rule I fall nearby. Could be seen us. Keep your weapons fried, brothers. Hold your fire until we make visual contact. Blood Crusader to strike team. Sergeant, this is Captain Obaldo. We read you on scry sensors. Visual feeds from your combat cameras are clear. You will, brother Captain. How do you wish us to proceed? So, this is the uh, the first proper mission. It's technically the second mission of the Space Marine campaign. Both campaigns were written, like, by actual Games Workshop writers, so they should be relatively good in their canon. Uh, but we're going to deploy our Terminators. So, this is the board up here. This is a Gene Stealer spawn point. I don't think they've got any others. I think everything else is clear. The X's are... Ooh, Fallen Ultramarines. Ah, those must be the Ultramarines that are in the Gene Stealer campaign. So you play the Gene Stealers in like a pre-campaign where you kill off these and then you discover all these like dead Ultramarines. That's cool. What's over here? Pipes. Ah, these are probably Gene Stealer spawn points, but the pipes need to be cleared first or something. Like the rubble needs to be shifted. Okay, so we've got five slots and we can put down our five people. We've got a Sergeant... A uh, heavy and three vanilla. The game calls them assault. I personally reserve the term assault terminator for terminators who have two close combat weapons because that's how they used to be in the original, like third edition when I was playing. Um, but these are in the game assault, which means they've just got a bolter, like a gun, and a giant power fist, a melee weapon in the other hand. 
So we're going to put the big gun first, the assault cannon. Oh, yeah. It's a bit of a sexy assault cannon right there. Put the sergeant next because the mission is actually to extract the sergeant over here. I'll put the assaults in here, here, and here. Notice that I have to pick every single one of their facings because facing is an issue. So if you look at each of these, these are Terminators. So those of you who don't know, I know that a lot of people who watch my channel do understand Warmer 40k Law, so I'm going to try and be relatively quick about it. But at the same time, I will try and, you know, explain it to the best of I can. I understand people who are really into Warhammer 40k Law. I too am into my law, but I'm going to try and summarize things relatively quick, which means there will be things I gloss over. So this is uh, Terminator armor. In fact, Terminator armor is not the right term for it. It's actually called Tactical Dreadnought armor because look how big it is and bulky. Like, this is Tactical Dreadnought armor, as you probably saw in the cutscene, which really emphasizes Tactical Dreadnought armor. So turning costs an action. We've got four actions for each person, as you can see. This little four here. And we can move. Oh, wait. Start the turn. That would help. Right, your turn. So we can, like, turn here, and that's one action to move forwards, one action to turn. Because, you know, we're pretty heavy. Uh, what we will do is try and clear a space. So getting up here with our sergeant is going to be relatively easy. I don't think anyone's actually going to be able to attack us up here. But people are going to come out of these side passages and attack us. Definitely over here. Because that's actually a marker saying, like, gene stealers are going to spawn. So we need to start blocking up these corridors. So I'm thinking we put someone firing here, put someone firing here. Actually, we could put one person firing there, one person firing there, one person firing there, one person firing there. And that means each of these crossroads will have two people firing on it, which should give us a really good overwatch. And then we just send the sergeant past, so... Yeah, so we move you to there. Get you to run this way. Oh, it's zoomed in. Uh, it does that occasionally, but I keep telling it not to because uh, I'm like trying to constantly move around because I'm used to tactical games. So every time it zooms in, I'm already pressing a move button. Uh, but bear in mind, by the way, there is a first person view, which looks really cool. It's just I'm so used to playing like you can like I don't want to turn, but you can turn. It's just going to cost me an action if I do. But look at that. Look at that! That looks pretty badass. Sorry, this is really, really like a Space Hulk. Like, it looks really like a Space Hulk. I mean, I know it's meant to, but at the same time, I'm going to nerd out over that. But yeah, I'm going to play pretty much the entire game from the isometric perspective. Oh, also because I've got the camera so tilted, it's like following the legs, I think. Um, but bear in mind, there, there is, if you care about it, a first-person camera. It looks really badass. But I'm just too used to playing games from a top-down perspective, so I personally am probably going to stick to this. Now, there's also a card system, which I don't need to use yet, really. I, well, I guess we could convert a card. So we've got cards. Um, these allow you to do, like, special actions and stuff. Or you can convert them. So if you have a look, like... There's a cost to play. We've got one command point. We can play this card. We can't play this card. But you can also convert a card into this. Two. Which is two squad actions. Which means that like each person's got four actions. But these two can be actions shared amongst the squad. Like anyone can take them. So we can convert one of the cards. But we will lose it. Target terminate. Is next melee attack successful? I've got two of those. Oh, we've got two of those. Yeah, we'll convert one. And that means we've now got two squad action points. Uh, we will run ahead with the sergeant. And they can walk diagonally. So turn one, walk diagonally for two. Okay. Uh, I left the assault cannon. Probably should have put them on Overwatch. Not that it really matters. And you open the door. And you're standing there. Okay. Now, I can't actually see what this is. This is a blip. And this is, again, something that's been very core to the original board game, uh, but also has been used in a few other uh, mechanisms in, in other games. But it's it's really like, a, this is a central thing in the original Space Hulk board game. We do not know what is in that blip. It could be 
Nothing. It's likely to be, I think, one to three gene stealers per blip. It's probably going to be one or two, probably two, since it's a starting blip, is my guess. Uh, so you can be like, oh crap, there's a blip coming! <gasps> and it's nothing. Like, it's effectively like rats or whatever. I mean, I don't know if they're rats in the Space Hulk. Um, I don't know if it's even got an atmosphere. It could be space rats, right? Could be space rats. Not nothing. The idea is it's like a echo on the sensor given off by, you know, interference or rats or whatever. But effectively, it's not gene stealers. But it could also be, because it's a motion blip, it could be like two gene stealers really close together. And we don't know until we see it. And right now, we don't, because, like, there's a door here. So we're going to move on. And I think... Yeah, move you to there. And we could move you forwards and, like, turn you or whatever, but I honestly think that we want this, like, overwatch going. So, with an overwatch, you will... Wait, wait for it. Bam. Shoot any gene stealer that moves within these, like, green tiles. Effectively, like, you're watching for a gene stealer to pop out, and then you're going to go... With the assault cannon, which is this giant Gatling cannon strapped to the arm. I mean, it's actually just mostly the arm, almost at this stage. Everyone else is done. We might as well convert a card, because you constantly redraw your cards, so... Melee attack successful, plus two on next melee. Another successful melee. We'll convert one of the successful melees. And... Yeah, we'll go to here. And that way you can set up another, like, overwatch next turn. Okay. That's an extra blip, so that spawned a blip. Okay, calm down, mate. You know, chill. We're we gonna find out what it is? No. Ah, they've left the door closed. Cunning. And there's two blips there now, which is a little bit more worrying. Okay, you turn around. You overwatch. You overwatch. You overwatch. And we'll open the door with you. Uh, now, I am actually playing on Veteran right now. There's two difficulty you modes. Know, there's the Classic, which is like the default, mostly like true to the board game. And then there's this, which is Veteran, which is a lot harder. Uh, I've decided to go with Veteran just... Because I, I'm, I don't know, I'm a masochist? I'm not sure. But either way, uh, we will walk forwards a little bit. I want to see if he reacts to the Ultramarines. Sergeant, hold. I see Astarte's power yep. armor on the visual feed. Go in for a closer look. Indominus pattern terminator plate. And the chapter colors are those of the 13th, the Ultramarines. I'd warrant this kindred battle brother perished here many decades ago. It appears the Blood Angels are not the first Space Marines to board this Hulk. Perhaps we can access this Fallen Sun's combat recorder. Theoretical. Our position will be overrun. We cannot hold. Tactical. Evacuation sequence has been initiated. Oh dear. It will not be enough. 200 life forms approaching. Brother Hilarion is dead. I am low on ammunition. They're everywhere. Ah! <laughs> the Ultramarines were overwhelmed and slaughtered. Oh. But why were they here? Why are we here? Move on, Sergeant. Perhaps this mystery will unfold as you proceed. We, you know, it's a Space Hulk. They're pretty cool. Space Hulks uh, are basically just consist of space debris that gets lost in the warp, which is their method of traveling really fast. You go into another dimension, you pop up another dimension, but the dimension's really dangerous, and it's called the warp. There you go. There's the TLDR and the warp. Um, that glosses over a lot of stuff. Oh, we can't turn. Okay, I guess we'll just move one. And plus to melee. Success. Plus to melee. We'll convert plus to melee. We'll turn with you. Okay. 
Now, the thing is, the way I've set this up is really, really good for Overwatch, but if they just keep coming, we're going to have a hard time pulling these guys out because we're going to have to walk forwards and then up, and then during that period, we're going to have a problem. Uh, we might actually lose our Overwatch, and they'll attack us, and then we'll probably die. Uh, probably should have taken the opportunity to move you more. Oh, well. It's done, it's done. Let's see if they open the door. They did not open the door. The section of the Hulk has collapsed. The gene stealers will surely take advantage of the breach. There we go. That was expected. So we've got another spawn point there. I think they're aware of the Overwatch. And they're just waiting. Like, we can hold them off just by Overwatching, I think. Because they're reluctant to do anything about it. Can I interact with the, the fallen space marine? Like, do I have to turn to interact with you? No, can't interact. Okay, you're just you're just window dressing. Right, well, what have we got over here? Next turn, he is a range six. He gets plus one overwatch attacks. Oh, well, we'll play this card. So we're actually gonna play this card and we're gonna play it on the assault. Not this, sorry, the Heavy Weapons Bearer. Just that so the Heavy Weapons Bearer can get a lot of shots in. And you know what? For fun's sake, we can totally shoot this door. And there's a Gene Stealer behind. So we murdered the door, and now the Gene Stealer is visible. So, no target in range. Okay, I'm going to Overwatch. Yeah, just out of range. Now, the smart thing to do would just be to let the Gene Stealers wait there, but I wanted to actually show you the Gene Stealers. They have a really cool reveal animation, but you didn't get to see it because I revealed it in a really weird way that actually doesn't trigger the animation. Um, but there is actually a really cool animation when they reveal, so hopefully we'll see the next turn when the blips reveal. So that's one Gene Stealer, I think, in that blip, because otherwise we'd have seen more appear. Right, is everyone done? Oh, we haven't converted a card. Um... We'll convert this one. Just give you an extra move. Okay. You shifted over. Another blip. There's a blip over here. Okay. We're going to move with you. You overwatch. You overwatch. You shoot the door. They're aware that they're just so gonna die. They're just not moving. I have found, by the way, this first mission, they do tend to just avoid your overwatches. It's very much like the, this is us playing with kid gloves. Like the gene stealers will avoid your overwatches. Later on, they get a little bit more hardball. But we can totally win this now. Okay. Um. I just keep switching between you. Do I need to extract two terminators? Oh, I need to extract another one. Well, that's silly of me. Uh, yeah, so we need to extract someone else, so... I should have been moving someone else from the beginning. Let's convert this. Oh, I'm waiting for you to move. Now, notice this little, like, warning here. That means that if I move into that area, I'm vulnerable to being attacked because they can make it here and attack in one turn. Like here again. There are just so many piling up now. 
They're not going to walk into my overwatches, so we should be fine. Uh, we'll convert a card. We don't really need a lot of these. Like, they're all to do with attacks and stuff, but right now the gene stealers are kind of holding back, so. Oh, crap! I didn't overwatch! Well, here we go. Oh, God. This was a bad idea. Suffer not the alien to live. All worry. First blood. Mark it well, kinsman. But oh, it's remembering the gene stealer. We actually killed this gene stealer that attacked us. No. 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 One of our kindred has fallen. Okay. Mistakes were made. So, we've got an issue now in that we're not actually covering positions we need to be covering. This is what happens when you don't overwatch. Sorry, that was a massive mistake there. Don't do that. I told you they were just waiting. I think it was still good because the objective for this one is pretty easy. And now they've closed range. I just can't kill enough of them here. Uh, right. Melee. Here's the thing. If if I attack here, you're just going to run around and stab me in the back. I need to move to here, but that's five. So, I think we might need to move to, like, here. Shoot that. Melee that guy. Move here. Okay. Um... We'll play plus two, plus two to your next melee on you. Then we will melee. Yes, cutscene! There we go. I told you they've got these little badass things. Uh, right, we've got to move here, which is two. That way we're protecting your back. And then we convert a card. And then you can overwatch by using your one and the squad one. There we go. Right. And then you're overwatching that. You, on the other hand, uh, this is going to be fun. So we shoot you. We killed one. We revealed the next. We're revealing them in really weird ways. We haven't played a single reveal animation yet. We're going to have to shoot you as well. Failed. Notice that uh, we rolled a three for two versus a five. So the four was less than five, so we failed. We need a five to kill the gene stealer. If we actually turn on... Which one of these is dice log? There we go. Whereas here, the first one, we rolled a five, two, four. We needed a five. The assault cannon rolls three die. And I think the stormbot only rolls two. Stormbots are like double-barreled rifles. Um... We will overwatch with the next one. I wonder if this applies to overwatch. I don't know if it does. Plus one on next shot. I guess... I guess it should apply to overwatches. So I'm going to play it. On you. And then overwatch. And you just keep running. Now, your back isn't guarded, so in theory the Dream Steelers could run after you, but I'm pretty sure you'll make it to the end point. I'm not worried about that. I'm concerned for these two, though. This is why you don't make silly mistakes like not Overwatch. There we go. There's a Overwatch shot on you. You can jam. Oh, there we go. Reveal. I told you the reveals are awesome. Look at that. Oh, we're killing so many gene stealers. Oh, no, that one lived. That one lived. It attacked us and it oh, got us. It got us. I right, killed two there. Three there. Four there. You're going to need to reload soon. Wow. And that one lived. That was impressive work. Oh, no. Ah, oh, we killed it. We hit it with the power fist. 
Nice! Okay, that's a lot of gene stealers. Stop! No! No! This, this, this is why, right? We might be in a strong position, but you get, you let them get one turn closer. And you just, you can take out as many as you want, but damn. Okay, and then we'll succeed anyway. It's a bit of a pyrrhic victory. We did lose three Terminators who we totally did not need to lose. There we go. Mission success. That was totally a success, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh... So... Gene we killed 12 gene stealers. Nine of them in Overwatch. Uh, Brother Madriel unlocked a chain fist, which is a different type of melee weapon. And we got components. Now, components are used to like upgrade your stuff. That's basically like the campaign currency. Uh, so we've got about 500. I'll confirm Sergeant, that. I have deployed additional battle brothers to your location. A heavy weapons bearer and apothecary will join your squad. Wait. An Imperial warship is approaching the Blood Crusader. It bears the penance of the Inquisition. Oh dear, that's never a good sign. Attention, sons of Sanguinius. This is Inquisitor Jost von Marburg, acting on behalf of the Holy Order Xenos of Terra. Stand to and prepare to receive new orders. This is Brother Captain Obaldo, commander of the Blood Crusader. Tell me, Lord Inquisitor, how was it possible for you to receive the distress call from Gorgonum? The warp storms in this sector are smothering all long-range astropathic communications. We received no signal. Okay. We knew this space hulk would be here. Our records call it the Forsaken Doom, and we have been aware of it for a long time. Okay. You, you. And yet, you sent no advance warning? It is not your place to question the will of the Inquisition, Blood Angel. The Ordo Xenos has a special interest in this particular derelict. It changes nothing. Your mission is to attempt to save Gorgonum. You may proceed with my blessing. So he's a bit of an ass. Lord Inquisitor, I must speak. This is Wiltran Lerzak, Fabricator General of the Forge World Gorgonum and faithful servant of the Machine God. I beg of you, we desperately need the support of the Ordo Xenos. <laughs> okay, uh, so... Oh, wait. Lord Inquisitor, Inquisitor... This, this is going to make a difference. So, uh, quick lore dump for those of you who don't know. Uh, Space Marines, semi-independent of the actual Imperium. They actually don't necessarily have to obey many people in the hierarchy. Um, Inquisitors also are semi-independent of a lot of the hierarchy. Uh, the Inquisitors basically root out heresy and corruption and investigate weird goings on. Um, so... What you've got here is two semi-independent entities both clashing because he's like, well, I'm here to save people. It's what I do because I'm a military person. He's like, I'm a creepy person who's got very vested interests in things that you do not understand. And uh, I didn't tell you anything or the Imperium anything. And he's like, well, I came here because I... And then they're, they're shouting at each other in there. Basically, it's like a really bad marital dispute. Um, and then, <laughs> again, another semi-independent... Uh, individual from the Imperium. I realize we've got three people here, probably the only three factions in the entire of the Imperium that are semi-independent. Um, so the Fabricator General, so the, uh, the planetary governor equivalent, but of a machine world, uh, a forge world. These are worlds dedicated to building stuff and making stuff, uh, owned and controlled by the Mechanicus of Mars, um, who are a semi-independent cult who worship the Machine God, which is possibly a version of the God Emperor who everyone else has to worship, apart from Space Marines. Um, it's complicated. Or, but it's actually a weird God trapped by the Emperor below Mars. It's complicated. Again, there's a lot of background lore. Um, I found that really weird. I've suddenly just realized we actually have the three, oh, the only three independent factions, semi-independent factions within the Imperium here. Huh. Uh, yeah, so basically he's in charge of this Forge world, which is a world, like, purely dedicated to making stuff and machinery and so on. 
And he's like, yeah, please don't wreck my world. We could do with your help, mate. I've petitioned the Space Marines for help and they've come along, which is nice. But but could you help as well? Uh, also, he's called him Lord Inquisitor. It could just be a salutation like Lord Inquisitor. He's being nice, but he could actually be a Lord Inquisitor. Lord Inquisitor basically is like a really, really high rank. The Inquisitors don't really have ranks. Um, once you're Inquisitor, you're kind of, that's it. You, it's a flat power structure, except Lord Inquisitor. Uh, they tend to be people who run, like, entire sections of the Inquisition in a sector. So, pretty powerful. Well, subsector, actually. But, anyway, moving on. I have no troops, no battle retinue to offer. I am merely here to observe. That's really helpful, mate. Observe, my lord. And may I ask why you will not intervene? I mean, presumably because he has no troops and no battle retinue to offer. I'm just going to put that out there. You may not, Captain. So helpful. Very well, Inquisitor. As for you, Fabricator General, my battle brothers have a mission and an enemy to kill. By the throne's light, that is all the Emperor's angels require. We are most grateful, honored Captain. Although it may not be enough to halt the derelict's advance, Gorgonum's planetary and orbital defenses are at full alert. We will open fire on the Hulk when it is within range. Yeah, so Space Hulks sometimes come out of the warp and pop through real space for a while before popping back into the warp for whatever reason. But they are of massive interest to everyone, particularly uh, the Tech Priest of Mars. Hello there. Uh, because they're like debris from many, many ships and space things and you know, a lot of asteroids normally, uh, from like thousands and tens of thousands of years ago, which means that they can have some really old, lost, forgotten technology that's amazing because the 40k universe is basically running off borrowed technology from the past. Um, technology that came was in like the 20, 20th millennium, 25th millennium, etc. Sometimes, you know, 30th millennium. Um, but basically the 40th millennium, we're like, oh no, we've lost all the technology. I think we're in the... This is in like 42 something, right? Which is like one of the few games I've played where it's like, yeah, we've actually gone past 41999999. Um, wait, that's too many nines. <laughs> Three less nines. Okay, we're going to continue. My crew and my kinsmen will take the brunt of this fight, fear not. But your expertise would be welcome aboard the Blood Crusader. Our ship still bears the wound of our last battle. I would bid you send us your most learned tech priests and all supplies you can muster. Okay. So, this is the campaign map. There are many like it, but this one is ours. Uh, you can see... Can I move the camera? There we go. Uh, we've got... There is something here. There is something here. That means that there is, surprisingly, you might guess, something there. Uh, it can be like enemies pop up. Um, but it often it's, it's a bit of lore or something. These are enemies pop up later, depending on if you spend like a lot of time traveling. This is as like a definitely an enemy, and then these are assets. Normally, like you know, you get extra components to spend on upgrades. Um, if we have a quick look at our squad management, yay! Everyone was fine. They managed to teleport out before being significantly wounded. Uh, we have... Hello. Brother Lazaro. Brother Caraniel. Brother Armando. Brother Madriel. And Sergeant Tahariel. Uh, and then if we have a look, you can, you can see they've got weapons and so on. You can upgrade them. Well, it's not really an upgrade. It's more of a side grade because you lose, say, parry and guard and you instead get, like, energy blast... Oh, you actually get guard from the storm shield. I think if you have a storm shield, you'd lose your bolter, though. I think thunder hammer and storm shield is a pair. Yeah. So you can't upgrade your storm bolter. Power sword, though. Nom, nom, nom. Uh, if we have a look over here, we can actually upgrade your power fist to a chain fist. I know it says storm bolter. I'm pretty sure... Are you saying that we can change the Storm Bolter to a Chain Fist? In which case you are an Assault, like you've got two melee weapons. Nope. 
Yeah, you, you change your um, power fist to a chain fist. Chain fists are basically power fists, but with a chainsaw on the end, they're used for boarding. Um, what's the difference between the two? There we go, power fist. Melee weapon, Re roll one die. Guard, re-roll your die once if you would lose the melee. Okay, so we roll one die, but it's a re-roll if we lose. Whereas this is plus one for frontal melee. Melee on interactive objects are always successful. Yeah, so it's a, it's a boarding weapon. It's designed to, like, breach bulkheads. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, we'll give you a chain fist. Why not? Later and get lightning claws. I love lightning claws. Plus one die, plus one in frontal melee. Uh, no one else has anything. Cards, you can buy card upgrades, but we don't really have enough components at the moment to do that. So I'm going to lay off. And then over here, you've got Stormbolt or Assault Cannon, Heavy Flame, a Plasma Cannon. I don't really want those. I love the Assault Cannon, though. I really do. I know it's the default heavy weapon, but it's so badass. Look at each Terminator. They're slightly different, and there's really variety and pretty. Sorry, I'm just fanboying. Uh, right, if we go back, because we can't really afford to upgrade anything else. Let's we'll start moving forwards. There's something here! Boris Sergeant, we finally boarded the Hulk. Our mission commences must be wary of the danger that awaits us here. We'll bring the Emperor's light into this darkness. Acknowledged, brother. Uh, now, I know that they said, oh, we've got some, like, reinforcements. Uh, I think it was an Apothecary and someone else. I can't remember what it was. I think it was an Apothecary and another Assault. Not another Assault, right? Another Heavy. Um, we don't have them yet. If we actually check the squad management screen, you'll see that it's just the five so far. Uh, we will unlock them soon. They're, they're on their way. Like, they're they're on the train. They're going to arrive at some point on the Space Hulk. They might have to wait. The trains will be delayed. You know, if they're English trains, they'll arrive any time between now and about six days' time, um, depending on weather. Be watchful. You might find relics or other items to use. Allow nothing to escape your gaze. Okay. Mm, we could grab this asset. Uh, the problem is the longer you take, the more this bar will fill up. And when this bar fills up, I think all of these become active. And then suddenly we've got a lot more fights on our hands. That said, fights, also good fun. I'll go grab some assets. 50 components. 50 more components. More. More. Yeah, we're playing the risky version right now. Brother Sergeant, we've detected a hostile presence ahead. It appears to be a group of gene stealers. Seek out and purge these Xenos. Okay. So, we have ourselves a fight. However, I think this is probably a good place to end this video. So, there you go. This has been a, a sponsored video. And there, there will be another two more after this. Uh, sponsored by Focus Home Interactive. Da -da -da, um, of... Space Hulk Tactics, which comes out on the 9th of October. There is a link down below if you wish to check it out. Uh, it has two campaigns. It has a skirmish mode. You can actually pick different chapters and customize them and stuff. The skirmish mode, by the way, is uh, both multiplayer and uh, player versus AI. Um, you can make your own maps. I think we'll probably just focus on the campaign just because I want to try and get into the campaign like three missions deep rather than just doing a surface glance. Uh, but there is a skirmish mode if you, if you want to check that out or whatever. And you can make like your own maps and stuff which sounds dangerous because I can't even do normal maps properly as we saw because I don't overwatch because I'm clever but anyway uh, hopefully you've enjoyed and if you have you know like subscribe etc also comment because I'm doing three videos uh, as part of a sponsored thing but if you want me to play more do let me know um, anyway I've never really seen until next time stay shiny <laughs>